Hi everyone, this is Screen Guard Guy coming to you with another Dota commentary after what has been an incredibly long enforced hiatus. Unfortunately, no Dota 1 replays have been coming out and has put me in the awkward position. Should I be doing other Dota related stuff? Should I be doing older games? But then very, very fortunately, a nice beautiful game coming out from Saurus as well as Island ETEC just appeared from the SMM Jahor qualifiers, the qualifiers, the first game posted onto Ghost of Gamers. And I'm like, okay, yeah, awesome. 6.746C map. So two uh, initial ban phases. Very, very surprised by the bans. But I'll talk about them in a little bit. Actually going to slow this down because I do like to talk about picks and bans. Um, yeah, so let's go right into it. I am a little bit rusty. Hopefully not super, super, super rusty. We're going to be seeing Batrider as well as Darkseer banned out, Invoker, and Chaos Knight. Very, very surprised by these. No Naga Siren bans, no straight common bans. Then again, we haven't seen a Southeast Asian game in a while. We haven't seen a Dota 1 game in a while. What's popular? What's not popular? Am I expecting a Jakiro like in Dota 2, which probably completely dominated the scene? Maybe a Sven where you're missing Drow Ranger, that new buff to her ultimate, absolutely insane. Very, very curious about the Ventral Spirit pickup. She is a very, very powerful hero, but is she really somebody you want to put into your first um, pick phase? Notice the picks from both sides. Normally, you would leave the supports till a little bit later unless you wanted to snag a very, very uh, sought after support, such as the Windrunner or the Earthshaker. We're going to be seeing them. At least one support picked up on both sides, the Ancient Apparition and the uh, Venture Spirit respectively. Looks like this might be a respect ban on, with this Chaos Knight. He's a very, very powerful hero. But there are, of course, a lot of other very, very powerful gankers. Fan also received a buff. Is the Chaos Knight a respect ban? I have no idea. Saurus as well as Island ETS, ETEC are completely new teams to me. Lich will be picked up. Probably worried about the laning phase potential, I want to say, as well as a life stealer. Not so sure. Well, I'm just gonna go with it. I mean, after all, they don't want to take in too many, they don't want to allow uh, ATC to have too many melee heroes at this point. Uh, they're gonna want to try and win this game early, so I'm not so sure if banning late game carries might be the worst. Draw Ranger, of course, the very, very strong late game hero, but I don't feel that Saurus have a lineup that want to go very, very late. Then again, that's just me. ETC don't have any late game, really, really late late game heroes either. Uh, Furon does work very, very decently, especially with that global teleport. A uh, tremendous pusher. If you want him to go hand with Midas, he can start picking up some really, really powerful luxury items. But I wouldn't say that's what he's going to be used for, uh, especially in conjunction with this Queen of Pain as well as Ancient Apparition. I'm going to just immediately what comes to mind is aggressive, aggressive team fights. That's what's rewarded within this patch. Um, actually, was rewarded in the 6.75 patch. You do get extra gold. Like it and throw going to be banned out. Really think these heroes, if, if ETC wanted these heroes, they probably uh, would have picked them up first. Nikes as well as Like and throw. Maybe not the best use of the bands, in my opinion. We're gonna be seeing Thrall picked up. I do love this pick, this hero. We haven't seen him in forever. Saurus, come on, pick something cool. Um, like a Sven, no. Uh, somebody we haven't seen in a while. Come on, I love fringe picks because, well, for starters, it gives us a little bit of an insight. How do you play these heroes? And on the second, well, it's just more fun to watch than standard games. KOTL is gonna be picked up. Very, very strong pusher. Of course, we'll counter that fear on a little bit. Going to be able to try and at least try and creep, keep the creep wave firmly rooted against the... Oh my goodness, I almost said dire scourge. Ah, it just shows how much Dota 2 I have been playing. I don't cast it yet. I may have to, uh, as I was saying about the uh, lack of replays coming out for Dota 1, but I'm not so much a Dota 2 fan, and there are lots of great casters for that. If you guys are interested, uh, or if you guys really want me to cast a Dota 2 game, I could take a look into that. There are some very, very high-level pubs that I really, really was interested in. And you know there's that Dire Tide where they've been killing Roshan in about two seconds. If you guys don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It's some Dota 2 nonsense. And we're going to be speeding up yet again. I want to see this last pick so, so desperately. It's going to be a troll warlord? What? Like, what? Crazy, what? I'm trying to think about what this is. Serious, immediate. Don't farm too far. Well, he is a very, very farm line here. Very, very powerful. Um, when he comes into that melee range with the bash, whirling axe is some of my favorite skills in the game. Berserk is just, you know, his ultimate is just absolutely insane because everybody attacks me bonus, but can they actually take advantage of that? And we're going to be seeing an, uh, an Obsidian Destroyer immediately. He's going to be coming up. I want to talk about him in a little bit, but of course I have to introduce these players. Saurus Red is going to be playing the Zaylor. It's going to be Axe 189 going to be playing this Ventral Spirit. Uh, 
RX-7 going to be playing the Drow Ranger, and it's going to be dark on that clockwork. I don't feel that the uh, Troll Warlord carries quite as hard as the Drow if it gets late. Uh, one of the advantages being a ranged like can carry. Penchabar is going to be playing this Disruptor. It looks like he's going to go mid. Dynasty, Dying Four Sty is going to be playing the Kasha. Going to be going solo mid. Vulcan's going to be playing that Ancient Apparition. Just, I think, going to be following this Thrall. Probably for a tri lane up top with the Troll Warlord. Uh, ETEC um, Mejody. Melody? Melody! Oh my goodness. <laughs> he's going to be playing this Troll Warlord. Is he going to go jungle? Is he going to go top? Who knows? Furon seems more suited to the jungle. He's going to be played by Materu. He's judging by his build. Maybe he hasn't picked up any clarities. Ring of Basilius plus the Tango. It's a bit unusual if I saw this in a pub. I don't know what I think, but you know, it might work. Let's just see how it goes. And we're going to be seeing two Slippers of Agility. Now, I want to talk about the Troll Warlord. He does probably need comparable amounts of farm to the Drow Ranger in order to be effective. Does he need quite as much? I, I don't want to say that, but... Um, no, he does need... I'm going to say it. He does need a similar amount. We're going to be seeing uh, Ensorus RYX140 going to be playing that Obsidian Destroyer. Going to give the Queen of Pain a very, very hard time. After Imprisonment is such a great skill. Steals the Intelligence then, plus the Essence Aura. Feels like you're walking on thin air. Then again, um, Obsidian Destroyer, one of the few heroes you can actually get the, the passive on, and it actually isn't the worst thing in the world you could do. Uh, it does give him, I think, 6% of his overall mana pool, which if you're looking at about 400, 6% uh, is about 24 pure damage. It's not bad for last hitting. You want to control the lane. Uh, if you want to take about one level into that, it's also pretty good. And Essence of Aura, of course, one of my favorite spells in the whole game. Gives everybody around you, if you cast a spell, a chance to, you know, regain some mana pool. It's, it's just too good. And then we see the Astral Imprisonment Harass starting things off. You're going to go... I'm going to just drop her mana right then and there. Uh, expect this to happen a few more times, especially when some creeps are in uh, are in range, like they're about to die. Deny some EXP. It's just absolutely fantastic. I love doing it. Um, try your nearest pub game. If you're in my tier level, <laughs> it's so good. It's just so good. As you see, this tri lane bottom in the long lane, we're going to be going against... I'm sorry, in the short lane. Going to be Sorry, yes, it's the long lane, isn't it? Going to be going against the Sphereon. In short lane, gonna be having, I think, a not good time as we see a bit of a go gonna be made in this Obsidian Destroyer. A uh, not good time, I wanna say, because, well, tri lanes, for starters, you're not gonna have a great time farming. Uh, even with those treants to help you farm, it's just, it's very, very difficult. Um, this one, Clockwork Goblin, a melee hero trying to do it. Don't know how he's gonna get farm at all against, uh, I think, three range, if we're gonna say, if we're gonna be honest. Yeah, it's three range, so. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough one. Um,. Anyway, both sides on this side going to be trying to go for a bottle. Not sure if that's going to help you, Kasha, at all. If you don't have the mana to do, to use any of your spells, you're going to your sitting in lane. It's it's just very, very technical, very, very hard to do. As we see up top, the pull's coming in. Great job. Troll Warlord definitely going to get the farm. And I'm about to sneeze, but I, I didn't sneeze. You know that feeling you get when you really, really want to sneeze and then you don't? Ah, oh, gosh, I just had that for the past two minutes. Not good, guys. As we see, Viron, once again, he's turned on the Ring of Basilius. Not so sure why. He wants to push out the lane a little bit. The thing about tri lane is you sort of commit yourself. And I'm not so sure what's going on here with the Azalear continuously using those Illuminates. Really, really does want to push the lane as well. Trying to get some early towers, I guess. They really want to end this fast. Both sides, they want to start, knock down the tower, then go ganking. It's one way to win the lane. When you devote, a, of course, three heroes to a lane, you kind of really want to get more than just farm because you're not getting as much EXP between the three you want to try and at least get a kill because well if you devote so many heroes to a tri lane that's that's sort of what you put yourself into this you put yourself in a position where you not necessarily must be aggressive but if you're not it doesn't bode well but then again the other teams also put themselves into a tri lane so i i feel that you just need to do better than the other tri lane which i don't think they are especially when you consider that the other tri lane does have of course more range against melee. Oh my goodness, look at that Queen of Pain dropping very, very low. This could be a bit of a mistake taking, I think, some harass. That's not necessary at all, but she, of course, does have her bottle. She can be bottle for, bottle crowing easily. We're going to be seeing, of course, Drow Ranger plus Mental Spirit. Command Aura has been skilled, so they are going to be going for um, quite a very, very, very aggressive... Ooh, that is a lot of unnecessary harass, and she may actually pay for that with her life. Who I thought she was going to have to magic missile creep. Um... Yes, what was I saying? Uh, Dry Ranger, wow, picked up the bottle, actually. That's pretty... No, she's got a south. Um, yeah, very, very aggressive. 
go as we see True Shot Aura going to be picked up. Uh, level, sorry, the True Shot Aura, True Shot Aura, which of course has been recently worked. It's really, really powerful now. The two Aura heroes, my goodness, I don't know how much they're, how hard they're hitting for. Like normally, you would not get an Aura early on. It doesn't give you that great a benefit. But certainly in conjunction with the two, if you can max, I think, a level four Aura by let's say level eleven, which of course when you would normally do it, let's say level nine. The pushing potential is just absolutely crazy. It's just, it's absolutely insane. I mean, you're probably going to skip out on Howl, actually. Which is, uh, which is the Scream of Terror. Um, which is, I don't know, it, it's an alternative build. It might be good. I love this combination. Mid lane, we're going to be seeing the go with the Shadow Strike starting things up. Of course, not enough, not enough. Are you going to go for Bottle? Bottle onto a Harbinger? It's almost completely unheard of because of his Essence Aura, but, well, he's just going to salve up. I think he should be fine for now as we see the push can be made for the bottom lane. Yes, this is, of course, one way to win the lane to get a to get a push. And we see Mechanism uh, attempted on this uh, Furon, picked up the Nazarene's Buckler. Going to help enforce these creeps a little bit, give them some extra armor. He's already sitting at level 5, practice at level 3. This is what happens when you go one um, one v three onto a lane. Let's just check out if you are doing comparably. No, not at all. Completely denied the farm level two right now. Going to get I think out leveled yes by the thrall as well as the ancient apparition. I want to say and certainly going to get. Oh my goodness, ancient apparition sitting at level four. That is a strong skill. And they've been giving Chikiro pretty much free farm his entire time. Uh, sorry, the Jak Jaka pretty much free farm the entire time. Going to pick up a poor man's shield. To deal with creep harass, really, that is, this is a one lane in that regards because they've done much better, I'd say, than this bottom trialing. Even though this bottom trialing is about to get themselves a tower, and they probably will start roaming then. Venture Spirit's magic missile early on, not something to be ashamed, uh, not something to be underestimated. As we see, Furon is going to be taking, I think, a little bit of right click damage. Magic missile, oh, going to drop the first blood. Did not need to drop that. Very, very much overly secure, I think, with his, um, with his. Oh, 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 true apparition level 6, no, not level 6 yet, but that could have been something. Um, very, very much, I think, too overly confident with the Treants, should have hung back a little bit, see if he's going destroy her. Let's just check out his level 6, uh, Queen of Pain, I think has been doing a bit better in terms of the room control. Where is the Queen of Pain? Oh, there she is. Oh, that's the Furion. Queen of Pain, a little bit better the room control, also hitting level 6, almost at 7. Uh, so slightly ahead of the of the Obsidian Destroyer. They want to get some levels onto Furion. He's sitting at level 5. Tr wants to get level 6 as soon as he can. Start using, spamming that alt. Push the creep wave against. And, well, go insane, basically. As you see, Helm of the Dominator is going to be picked up in Troll Warlord. Is he going to dominate a creep and do some ancient stacking? Is he going to dominate a creep? Just uh, use it to gank? What? I I have no clue. I see Adventure Spirit as once again, do not underestimate that magic missile. Doesn't have swap quite yet. Furion, I think they hate you. I think you must have done something to them. Mataru, you must have like, like, I don't know, beat up their parent or something because it looks like they're going to go for you. As I say that, Adventure Spirit moves away, so whatever you did doesn't, couldn't have been that bad. Oh, Ancient Apparition, going to scout things out. He's going to get cut out. Ooh, a few right clicks. Cold Feet's going to be going on, and that is the end of that gank attempt. Uh, it's just going to end with some unnecessary harass. Well, at the very least, Clockwork Goblin isn't dying, but he is very much an earlier game hero than what you would say. Uh, so, if he's not hitting 6 by now, it's kind of useless. They did give him that solo lane, intending for him to get the levels, if, although probably not for the farm so much. He didn't really get either, so it, it is a bit of a lost cause. They're going to be playing very, very down with this hero, as we see the Whirling Axe is going to be going off. Here comes the Ancient Apparition, as we see a bit of a go with those cogs, going to be moved up, very, very nicely done, Windrunner just going to get out, but Glimpse back in immediately, going to be dropping to the right clicks, Clockwork Goblin also similarly falls, too much, what can you do as we see, here we go, Smoke of Deceit, big gank, nothing's going to happen, if you go in you're going to die, oh, Illuminate plus the Magic Missile, but straight off with a Fear on deep, go, 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 as we see Teleport's going to be coming in, Ooh, what's going to be happening? I don't think you can do much. Rocket can be moving forward. Probably should get a bottle and use the rockets to farm. Might be a not, not might not be a bad idea. As we see Queen of Pain getting virtually free farm here at the bottom. With that ball, it's I think a little bit too much. Let's just check out what you've got, Jekara. He's got the boots. He's got the boots of speed. 
Everybody's got Boots of Speed. What, what's one of the great things about Boots of Speed? About this particular patch? Well, Boots of Speed now costs 450. I love that. I love the fact. And just what it's done for support means they can get their items earlier. It's just so very good. I mean, they, they don't want to upgrade their boots. Uh, it's not they don't want to, but uh, very, very unlikely that they will be able to level 7 on this Harbinger. As we see, these Furion going to be moving forward. Oh my goodness, bottom tower almost completely gone. Screen paint just could be a bit of harassed. Those frost arrows, so very, very good with the new buff for the uh, frostiness. Shall we say added frostiness? See, ancient apparitions, ice blast gonna completely miss. Yeah, it did. Um, up top, big nothing's gonna be going on right here, right now. What do you do if you're a clockwork goblin and you really, 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 really desperately need the levels like incredibly now? You can't go jungle for them. <sighs> it's really, really a tough question. You need to start being very, very aggressive. You need to go out with, let's say, your supports, and you need to start pushing down towers uh, or start defending them. It's a very, very greedy style of play, and what it means is probably Fear Out's going to be coming in, and we're going to see a bit of an engage. There's a Sprout going to be going off. Magic Missile right to his face. Oh, Sonic Wave. Hang on a second. What was that? Going to be restarting this replay. Wait a minute, guys. Hey guys, we're back. We just had a what the heck? Just had to fix the uh, animations a little bit, but Sonic Wave, it doesn't appear to be showing up. No idea about that. No idea what to do about that. It didn't seem to work. As we see, an exchange of heroes. Let's just check out the score really, really, really quick. Uh, it's going to be 4-2 to two in favor of the Scourge. What is this, actually? This new items thing. I kind of like it. <laughs> um, I don't think that was there before. Anyway, what was I saying? Yes... Come on, rocket. Rocket, man, rocket! Okay, well, I guess he figures it, it won't kill him. Seriously, not even a rocket attempt. Thrall get level. He does need the levels. Not yet level 6. That's, I think, their only consolation. But, of course, Thrall is more of a support, and his skills are more useful. His, his, his Him underleveled is still slightly more useful than a Clockwork Goblin underleveled, which is basically useless and even harmful, depending on those power cogs. How those power cogs are placed. As we see, I think an attempted gank can be coming in from this thrall as well as this ancient apparition. No, probably not. If they wanted to gank, it probably would have come in through the river with smoke in order to try and dodge some of these wards. As we see now, these two are definitely going to be a roaming party. Uh, Ezaler, the keeper of the light, not necessarily what you immediately think of when when you say uh, strong yanker, but very, very actually very powerful in that regard. As I learned to my cost, I would see uh, obsidian destroyer. I think picking up. Dagon? I don't. I really have no clue at this point. Dagon could be four staff, could be um, Yule Scepter of Divinity. So very many things that are really, really great for the Obsidian Destroyer. Of course, I would, I would go straight hex if I'm having a good time. Um, good time. It's only sitting about 918 gold, so not maybe not having the best of times, but definitely not the worst times. Magic missile. No, no, you're so far back. Ah, uh, side. Mental Spirit wants to hit that level 6. going to be so very, very, very powerful once he gets that ultimate. We're going to be seeing some very, very aggressive engages. Now we see Drow Ranger hitting level 7. She's going to be picking up, I think, a Yasha, I want to say, next. No idea. Drow Ranger, of course, so powerful with that new... Uh, just laying on that DPS from the new ultimate. I think it's a 400 range. You don't have to... Uh, if your allies are in the 400 range, we see... Wow, that ultimate doing a lot. Coming in from the Furon, pushing the creep away. That's what I'm talking about. As we see, point booster. Going to be going for the Agonims on the Akasha. We're going to be seeing this Trilane vigorously defending this top tower, which is, of course, in no danger. Mechanism is going to be the uh, next choice for the Keeper of the Light. He's picked up all the components. Rattle Trap still has no items. Ventral Spirit, well, she has no items, but she's a support. As we see, I think an attempt to go. Thrall going to be coming in. Where's the glimpse? No glimpse. But looks at, look at that. Look at that. How cut out of position the Drown Ranger is. She wants to get one kill before she goes down. Oh, Furion going to be coming back in. Obsidian Destroyer actually taking it all. Completely distracting everybody away from it. Drown Ranger, unfortunately, not able to do much. But she did get that one kill. So I think there's two for two. Trade in there somewhere. It's not completely bad. Meanwhile, top lane. They know, well, there's three heroes there. I'm going to push this. Illuminate straight up. Right click, going to run through the creeps. She's going to bang, 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 knock it down. Come on, pressure this tower sort of thing. Especially since mid tower is also equally going to get pressured. Glyph has been popped. Nice draw out right there. Are you level 8? Wow, Queen of Pain. Sitting at level 10, uh, 10 as the Furion sitting at level 9. Chasm completed. Middle tower is going to be going down. Roche will be the next call coming in from Melody. 
Will Top Tower similarly follow? It's going to be taking a lot of damage. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast is going to come in, try and clear the creep wave a little bit, but it was a little premature. We're going to be seeing a lot of ores going to be coming in right here. Fioran is going to be jumping right there. You have Swap, but there's no follow-up damage. Thro Troll Warlord is well on his way. Sorry, Thrall is well on his way. Uh, Troll Warlord is doing the Roche thing. Yes, you can do this easily with the Helm of the Dominator, but just with some lifesteal as well. Uh, keep in mind that Bash does go through Magic Immunity. Yasha going to be the next item of choice on the Troll Warlord. I like it. I like how fast he's getting farmed. As I say, uh, Troll Warlord um, sorry, is one of those heroes who does need a lot of farm. So I like how he's able to do it. Not very many heroes can do it, especially if you're... Uh, well, if you're as... I think you want to say as frail in the early game as the Troll Warlord. So being able to get that farm... Moy impressive. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. As we see lots of Wraith Bands, as well as a lot of basic agility items. Gonna be hitting so very, very hard. Seeing for 168 at level 8. That is that is not bad. That's not bad. They must know Roche is being up. No, but they don't have any wards. I think a slight mistake, especially if you're playing against the Troll Warlord. It's one of the things you can do. It's kind of like if you're playing with an, against an Ursa, you want wards up in that Roche pit. As we see, they want to make it go for the mid lane. Illuminate could be starting all things off a little bit premature. Not oh, actually going to hit a few creeps. So that's not bad. Can't deny that. Yep. Not going to get that one in time. As we see the mid lane, they start getting pressured. Tower advantage, of course, for the Scourge at this point. So they want to try and even things up. Ancient Ambush Ice Blast going to start things off. So much damage coming in. Venture Spirit looking so low. Scream of Pain. Ooh, yes, going to shatter. Plus the Sonic Wave. Uh, we saw the ground move, but we can't see the animation. No idea what's going on with that. As you see, top lane. Oh my goodness, going to get completely slowly, but surely pushed. Global presence of this Furion. Super annoying, especially with that mech. It hasn't picked up boots, but the ores he's giving off. The immediate sprout. Oh, Drow Ranger completely cut out of position right then and there. What can she do? Kills going left and right in favor of the Scourge. What can the Sentinel do? Apparently, they're only four kills behind, but they are uh, quite a few towers. Uh, one tower, actually. Not that far behind. Wondering if they can make the comeback. Uh, do they carry quite as late? Well, I do believe the Drow Ranger still. I still do believe, of course, the Drow Ranger carries slightly later, especially since that Roshan. A just got nerfed to the six minute mark, but you know it's a close thing. Obsidian Destroyer, of course, not bad in the late game either. He's picked up a four stab gonna give some nice survivability in that regards. He's sitting on currently on 95, 90, it's about 100 gold. What's his next item? It's gonna have to be something big. I'm gonna go with Hex because that really you know it allows you to remove the troll warlord. Yules is kinda okay as well, it gives you some great mobility, very, very defensive, especially if they start all ganking you, which is probably what's going to happen very, very, very soon. Um, that the Scourge will start to go on the offensive, and they'll start to be the ones responsible for these ganks if they haven't already. Um, so yeah, Yules would also be a great item, but it's not as aggressive, I think, and I do like more aggressive items and choices. I don't think you can be passive at this point and still try and win the game. Because Yasha has already been picked up. Look at that centaur. He's doing a one-man push, this Troll Warlord. Uh, Furon can come in any time. Big Team Fight coming in in the middle. Looks at that Glyph doing so much damage. Everybody's going to get hit by that ultimate. Oh, teleport out immediately from Venture Spirit, but she's going to die anyway. Let me see it go in. Go for the Azalea. Going for the Azalea. Going for the Azalea. Taking so much right-click damage. Glyph, the uh, sorry wall, wall is just going to miss him. Look at the beautiful creep blocking. Great to pay match to pick up the Keeper of the Light. Beautiful creep blocking. We're going to be trapping that... Um, Clockwork Goblin and Scream. Oh, Scream. Immediate Power Clogs plus Sprout. They really want to be in there together. Monster Kill going to be going off. Ultra Kill just for Dynasty. Oh, Blink plus the Scream of Pain. I think this is another tower. Glyph has already been used. Everybody's dead right here, right now. Look at this Troll Warlord bashing down. Having absolute free farm. Do whatever he wants on the bottom lane. Four heroes, one of which is a Furon, the best pusher in the game. One of which is a Queen of Pain. We can literally... Um, clear creep webs in one shot. Look at that tower just absolutely melts. And I want to call this game over for the Sentinel Blink backwards. That is quite a tease, I want to say. Media teleports out. Whoo, quite a tease indeed. As we see, Fear I'm going to be going up top Dagon. Ah, oh, Necronomicon. Yeah, sure, that's great. Of course, it will greatly enhance his pushing capabilities and is just absolute nuisance to deal with. Uh, especially for the other team. You kill it, you take pure damage. What? What? And, uh, of course, Roshan is firmly in the grasp of the Scourge side at this point. And they can, in terms of map control, they can take it whenever they want, whenever their heart desires. He has been stacking Ancients with the uh, Centaur. 
and it's going to be doing a absolute gem of a job farming them. This is this is gold right here. This is gold. You can do it, of course, with the Helm of the Dominator. It's really, really, really powerful. Look at that. Using that ultimate. Just, do, 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 do. just wear them down. Don't want to take too much damage. But, of course, once you have uh, the Helm of the Dominator, you're hitting with probably the, life, the attack speed of some sort of uh, meth. Or is it, what's the cocaine addicted um, Tetris player? You, you you find it very very difficult to I think take too much damage. Uh, at least nothing that you won't gain back immediately. Of course, you don't want to be caught with low health and die, especially not at this point in the game. But you do have your Aegis, and I think he's being a little bit over the cautious. Tower not quite yet in deny range. Smoke immediately coming up, and this is what I'm talking about. This is them going aggressive, and they can probably do it. Just these three heroes alone, Cold Feet. Plus the um, kinetic field going to keep somebody in position. Screaming Pain Sonic Wave, right clicks. Furion jumping in with a Sprout if you need it. It's a little bit too much. Fortunately for the Sentinel though, uh, these guys aren't going to find anybody. They're, 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 they're screwing around in the wrong part of the jungle. Not, of course, that there's any way they can know that these guys are coming up. Well, short of getting, like, peppering the place with wards. I just want to check out the levels really, really, really quick. Well, not that quick. Let's check out the levels. 10, 7, 10, 7, 7 against 13, 11, 8, 7, 3. It is very, very firmly in the grasp of the Sentinel. Don't know what else really they can do. 2,600. I'm seeing ETC Vulcan set. The amount of gold he has. Because in that case, Saris, you guys are really, really in a world of hurt. As we see. <coughs> is that how much he got from, like, doing this? Melody. Oh, Manta style gonna be picked up on this troll warlord level 13. Wow, he he hits hard. He hits hard. Just wanna say that. Boom. Urn of Shadow is gonna be picked up on Calder. Probably gonna go for something else. Snakes like a four staff. Uh, mech already being picked up by the Freon. You don't wanna get too many mechs. You don't wanna get more than one actually. But uh, we have seen seen quite a few. Pipe maybe even. You'll be seeing I think. Lincoln Sphere going to be the next item. I do like the reverse order since there aren't really that many single target stuns or spells that you really, really look out for. Um, hook is one, but of course he'll still come towards you. Uh, magic Missile probably another as we see. Ooh, the net, Whirling Axes, Ventral Spirit Swap, very defensive. Sacrifice for life. Is it going to be enough though? Magic Missile, she's going to die. Oh, the, oh my goodness, look at that Static Storm plus the Kinetic Field plus the uh, Sprout. Doing too much. We see Clogs coming in. He is going to give up his life right here and right now for nothing as we see Queen of Pain just going to take out some creeps right then and there. Wow. Absolutely great use, uh, great micro actually coming in from both sides and now Fura decided to stop microing. Is he AFK? What's going on? That was a free tower if he wanted it. He's going to get himself an Azalear anyway. Uh, teleport's coming in. Fura wow, I don't know what you're doing buddy. As we see Whirling Axe is immediately going to be coming in. Uh, try and deal with that threat as we see GG's gonna be called by the Sentinel nothing much they can do um, What immediately gonna come right straight to this screen guys? I hope you guys enjoyed that it was a little bit one-sided but guys hey It's a Dota 1 game I'm hoping to bring out some more Dota 1 games Hopefully if they're better and it was really really cool to see Pro Warlord in action uh, Yep, this is screen guard guy. I'll see you guys again later next time whenever